Now I'm recording, so good evening. Let's talk about the uh, ocular surface infection, uh, which is a sample session. But before we proceed to the ocular surface infection, I want to uh, mention something about the normal ocular flora. This is uh, mentioned before in the uh, first uh, ICO curriculum, which is the microbiology section. Here, I want to remind you with the staph epidermidis as being the, the commonest or the most common gram positive. And after that, I have the coagulase negative staph, staphylococci and the staph aureus. And finally, I have the most common gram negative, which are the diphtheroids or the corn bacterium diphtheroids. Okay. Uh, after that, I have some parasitic uh, commensals like Demodex folichlorum, which um, live in, uh, in relation to the eyelashes and the modex brevis as well. Uh, they increase uh, in number with age. They become uh, ubiquitous. Ubiquitous means that they uh, are found everywhere. This is uh, what I want to mention. I want to remind you another uh, with another uh, thing, which is uh, um, I, ha I don't have any fungal or viral uh, free commensals. This uh, table uh, will confirm the data that I mentioned before. OK. Uh, uh, let's talk about the pathogenesis. I have two roots. I have exogenous or endogenous. And if I'm talking about the external ocular diseases or the uh, ocular surface infection, which is more common, exogenous or endogenous? What do you think? Well, I guess it is easy. <laughs> I think it is exogenous. Uh, here, yes, uh, the endogenous here. I, I don't have any endogenous uh, except in uh, cases of septicemia or pyemia uh, in order to reach to the eye. In order to reach the eye, sorry. In order, in order to reach the eye, I, I want to have, um, I, I, I have to have a septicemia or pyemia. So this occurs in homeless or addicts or a very bad uh, health state, okay? Uh, or health status. Uh, here, uh, uh, the exogenous uh, inoculation occurs by adhesion, occurs by adhesion. And this uh, is dependent on uh, many factors. It is dependent on the virulence of uh, the um, uh, organism and it is related to the immunity of the host. So if I have a very virulent uh, organism and a low immunity, in infection is likely. Okay. So this is uh, important. This is mentioned in uh, uh, the text. Uh, after that, I have the mechanisms of infection of uh, uh, external uh, infection or, or exogenous infection, I have uh, to have adhesion to the ocular surface, or I have some organisms which uh, are um, uh, which which can uh, directly invade the apparently intact corneal epithelium or ocular surface epithelium. Uh, so uh, they are uh, Neisseria, which are Neisseria meningitis and Neisseria gonorrhea. Uh, after that, I have diphtheria. After that, I have listeria. And finally, I have the Haemophilus influenza. I can, in, I can add like American Academy. These are mentioned, by the way, in Kansky. We can add to them Shigella species and Fusarium species. And uh, by, uh, by the way, Fusarium, as we know, uh, um, are not uh, bacteria. They are fungi. So I have here the adhesion via expressing a protein which helps um, the organisms attached to um, the ocular surface, uh, like um, something like integrin, something mimicking or uh, resembling integrin. Um, also, I have another route of infection. So I have adhesion. I have uh, these organisms that can uh, uh, that can directly uh, invade the apparently intact epithelium. I have also here as uh, a third mechanism, a break in the epithelium. So if I don't have this mechanism nor this mechanism, I, I will rely on a break in the epithelium or epithelial abrasion or corneal abrasion. So if I have abrasion in the ocular surface, the infection uh, uh, must be also likely. This introduction is important in understanding how can I infection um, and uh, I guess it is not uh, it is not important in the exam but it is mentioned in American Academy so we can uh, start with it so uh, let's go to the diagnostic laboratory techniques which is extremely important uh, for um, the basic sciences exam or the visual sciences exam it is also important in clinical exam and it came out uh, in a previous exam so let's go to it uh, let's talk about the stains and about the media uh, for 
aerobic bacteria. We have gram for anaerobic, we have gram stains, gram positive and gram negative. Mycobacterium, we, we should have acid fast stains like Zeal Nielsen stain. Uh, for fungi, we have also gram, uh, but uh, white and uh, Gracut gomery, they are uh, important here for uh, uh, not only for fungi, but also for acanthamoeba together with uh, uh, gene sustain and indirect immunofluorescent antibody. Uh, these, these are the stains which are important uh, here. Um, uh, and um, also I have uh, another uh, um, issue which, which are media. Which media do we uh, uh, use to uh, grow aerobic bacteria? We have blood agar or chocolate agar. And here chocolate, it is not chocolate, it is blood also. Okay, so uh, anaerobic it is uh, important, thioglycolate uh, broth, and this is mentioned before. This came out in uh, uh, 2016, April 2016 exam. My exam, by the way, this, this was my clinical exam. Okay, so uh, this, this one, uh, this question wa wasn't that uh, easy, thioglycolate broth, but it is mentioned, frankly, here in American Academy. Okay, we have the mycobacteria. The mycobacteria has um, uh, Lovenstein, Jensen agar. Just, uh, this is uh, also important. Fungi, we have Saburo agar or brain heart infusion and acanthamoeba. This is uh, unique and this is uh, easy to remember, which, which is acanthamoeba can, uh, can feed on E. coli. So I have non-nutrient agar uh, with bacterial overlay or with E. coli overlay. Okay, this question came out before in April uh, uh, 2016. 32-year-old uh, patient visits the emergency department. He, uh, here, here it is the clue. Uh, you perform scrapping of the cornea and you suspect anaerobic bacteria. So which media? Uh, I guess it is number D. I know it is number D, like broth. This is important one. Okay, this is an example that these questions may come uh, in uh, the clinical exam. It is not only related to or not only strict to uh, the uh, visual sciences, they may come uh, out in these exams. Okay, so how to collect? This is not that important, but here I have, um, this is important by the way in the VIVA questions but they are, are not important here in, in uh, the MTQ questions. But here I have uh, this one. Why not tetrakine? If I use topical anesthetic to collect a biopsy from the cornea uh, or a swab, why, why don't I use tetrakine? Why tetrakine is contraindicated? Because it has antimicrobial activity. So I can use instead uh, proparakine. Uh, proparakine, it is not that potent that, uh, 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 then or, or like tetrakine, but uh, uh, here, tetrakine has antimicrobial activity, so uh, tetrakine is not used. This is important one. Here, I want to mention that if I have to have staining, I have to use a sharp instrument like the blade or the spatula. And if I have to have or to, to make a culture media, a culture media, uh, I may use a cotton swab. Either spatula or swab is accepted in this uh, case. Uh, this is uh, how can I do scrapping using the spatula. This is this sharp instrument is the spatula. Here I want to mention again that uh, this is um, a sterile instrument or swab should be used for each row of C-shaped. Here, here it is C-shaped. So I can. I can put uh, parts of the specimen in these uh, specific uh, uh, sites. Uh, I don't touch the blade uh, in order uh, to avoid contamination. Okay, here, uh, this one is important uh, again for MCQ, which is calcium alginate is not preferred. Uh, uh, and also cotton, cotton swabs should be avoided in cases of viral, in cases of viral infection. So if I suspect viral infection like herpes, or uh, like uh, any dendritic ulcer or like any viral adenoviruses. If I suspect viral and I want to make a culture, I can uh, avoid, I must avoid uh, calcium alginate and cotton swabs because they may inhibit viral recovery. Okay, so um, 
uh, this was uh, uh, the the, um, the bad introduction of microbiology. I, I guess it is uh, not that easy, and it is inversely related to seniority. So, uh, if if you if you are um, a senior, if uh, uh, the more you get more seniority, the more you get seniority, the less you you will remember this uh, basic information. So let's go to some interesting one, uh, which is the virology and viral infection. Um, and this is uh, somehow touchy because it is um, um, relevant to our uh, clinical life. Uh, we, we all know about the uh, herpetic and dendritic ulcers. So uh, let's talk about the virology and viral infection. But before we proceed to viral infection um, or viral infections or diseases related to viral infections, let's talk about the virology uh, in general. And this is also an, a microbiology introduction. I have to know that uh, for um, uh, the um, viral nucleic acid consists of either RNA, DNA, and this is important to know because here, because of that antiviral medication typically target viral gene transcription. Therefore, the clinical significance of nucleic acid type lies principally in the differences in susceptibility to antiviral medication. So uh, if I want to understand um, the use or um, the differences between the medications and susceptibility to the viruses, I, I must uh, to, to have at first, to, to know at first um, in the nucleic acid composition. So here, I, I, I know this is, um, again, this is repeated from uh, microbiology. I have um, some protein which is called ca uh, capsid like that. And um, this, uh, this uh, envelope contains here, uh, not the nucleus, but here the genetic material I don't have here, here in the nucleus. Uh, but this is for uh, enveloped viruses. Uh, these enveloped viruses are uh, somehow, somehow uh, their infectivity is short-lived outside the host. So they, they may be very dangerous inside the host like HIV, but outside you don't you don't have to um, uh, um, for the HIV you don't have to fear uh, from uh, infection or HIV infection from using uh, for, from contact or from droplet or from um, uh, a contaminated material because uh, they they um, have a very short duration outside the host. But here here in the non enveloped viruses you do have to, to be aware like the adenoviruses because they persist for weeks outside the human host. This is uh, uh, extremely important. So here, if we want to um, bleach the tonometer tip, if we uh, want to, uh, the tonometer tip, as you know, um, can be used from person to uh, person, can be used uh, from patient to patient. So uh, cleaning the tonometer tip is uh, extremely important. So alcohol sterilization is not uh, that effective or is not sufficient in this setting uh, because they may uh, be contaminated with adenoviruses, which um, can uh, depend uh, on a bleach which contains uh, a diluted sodium hypochlorite. Okay, so let's go to the DNA viruses. Uh, and from the DNA viruses, we will talk about, uh, basically about uh, uh, the herpes uh, viruses. And the herpes viruses, we have five types. We have herpes simplex virus. We have varicella zoster virus. We have also cytomegalovirus. We have uh, uh, again, we have again what we have um, uh, Epstein, Epstein uh, bar virus, and finally we have Kaposi related virus. Okay, these uh, five viruses are extremely important, and we can we can uh, specify a great detail for uh, herpes simplex and varicella zoster virus. Let's go to uh, some basic concepts about the herpes simplex and uh, uh, varicella zoster uh, virus, which can uh, lead to herpes zoster ophthalmicus. So here, the herpes simplex virus can be caused by herpes simplex type one or type two, which is more common in infecting the eye. It is type one because type one is um, uh, commonly present uh, above the waist. Here, if we have if we have a human body above the waist, it is type one, and below the waist, it is uh, type two. 
Okay, here the etiology for herpes zoster ophthalmicus or shingles or uh, the zoster disease, it is the varicella zoster virus, which is, consists of two words, varicella disease and zoster disease, varicella zoster. So varicella uh, is the chicken pox disease and zoster is the herpes zoster ophthalmicus, which is the shingles. Okay, this is extremely important for us. The chicken pox, no, I guess it is not that important. Okay, so uh, let's talk about um, let's talk about the primary and the secondary infection. For uh, all the herpetic viruses, we have uh, always some latency, and uh, uh, this latency uh, vary from type to type. So here, uh, for the herpes simplex and the uh, varicella zoster virus, we have uh, uh, they, they are they have something in common, which, which are uh, uh, the latency in the sensory ganglion. Okay, uh, here um, I, I may have a primary infection, which is not that important. Uh, it, is, uh, it can occur at, uh, in the form of uh, some vesicles, some vesicles. And uh, here it is um, uh, something like the chicken pox of uh, uh, the children here. Uh, this is the primary infection. It is not that important. It can cause the blepharoconjunctivitis. Blepharoconjunctivitis. Okay. Epithelial keratitis here may may occur, but it is unlikely. After that, um, uh, the virus stay latent in the trigeminal ganglion here and here in the sensory ganglion. But uh, for the secondary infection, when the immunity uh, uh, becomes low or in some stress, stressful conditions like uh, ultraviolet exposure or psychological stresses or um, uh, other factors uh, here uh, the viral uh, the virus cause retrograde migration to the cornea and uh, um, uh, the secondary disease or the recurrent disease will occur okay uh, and uh, um, uh, the, uh, after the recurrent infection occurs, the systemic disease will uh, consist of face and lips, herpes, and uh, prodromal symptoms. Uh, this is extremely unspecific or non-specific, uh, which are fever, and anorexia, headache, malaise. They may resemble the common cold. Um, here, I may have genital herpes in type 2. But here I have also uh, the prodromal and the, the herpetic uh, disease, but this may respect the midline more than this. So uh, this, this is uh, uh, somehow related to uh, the, the dermatomes, related to the dermatomes of uh, the trigeminal branches. Um, this will be mentioned in, in great details. So they, they are just introduction for the herpetic diseases. Okay, I may have here pre-herpetic neuralgia. Here I have pre- and post-herpetic neuralgia in cases of uh, herpes zoster ophthalmicus or uh, uh, shingles. For uh, the ocular disease, I have epithelial keratitis, which is like that. It is dendritic with terminal bulb or dilatation like that. This is, this is an example of, or this is a, a drawing of dendritic ulcer. And this is uh, the double stain. The double stain means that I have fluorescein and rose bengal. The fluorescein uh, will stain the bed like that. And this is stained by fluorescein. And the rose bengal will stain the edges like that. Like that. Okay. So uh, this is the double stain and this is a unique and uh, characteristic of uh, the epithelial keratitis or the herpetic epithelial keratitis. Okay, uh, here for um, uh, the herpetic keratitis, if I don't here look at look at this before before I, I talk about this. Look at this uh, shingles uh, or herpes zoster ophthalmicus. You you see that these vesicles are respecting the midline like that. Okay. They are uh, more characteristic or, or more characterizing to uh, or more um, unique to the uh, um, herpes zoster ophthalmicus or shingles. Okay, uh, if this uh, patient is treated by steroids, falsely treated by steroids, uh, steroid or misdiagnosed and treated by steroids, it may cause something like that, which is the amoeboid ulcer or the geographical ulcer like that. Okay, so this is uh, a result of decreased immunity or uh, uh, the use of corticosteroids. Okay, 
So um, before I, I talk about this, let's talk about something about the uh, treatment, the usual treatment of corneal ulcer. And after that, I have specific treatment, which is acyclovir. But the acyclovir ointment is not commercially available in the US. Uh, I guess it is not uh, commercially available. I know it is not commercially av available or it is extremely rare in Egypt here. So um, um, we, we can use trifluoridine. Unfortunately, trifluoridine is also not present here, but uh, we can use gancyclovir eye drops. I know it is not uh, sufficient. Okay. Um, and the treatment will be mentioned in great details and the differences between the agents of the antivirals will be mentioned in great details. Okay, uh, after that, uh, here I have the same treatment, but oral acyclovir here is uh, the primary treatment because I have here shingles. I, I don't have just uh, the epithelial keratitis, I have systemic disease. And um, uh, I want to treat also the uh, pre-herpetic neuralgia and this, or the pre and post-herpetic neuralgia, these are extremely important. Uh, but before, before I proceed to uh, the great details of each of them, I want to mention something. Uh, for the complications of herpetic disease, I have what? I have um, herpetic keratitis can lead to herpetic uveitis with Herpetic uveitis with uh, some characteristics which will be mentioned in the uveitis uh, section. But but here we can mention that we have elevated IOP as a result of this herpetic uveitis. Okay, I have uh, also infection or not infection. I have uh, some uh, allergic inflammation in the mid stroma, which is called interstitial keratitis. Interstitial keratitis, which is mid-stromal inflammation. Uh, by the way, for this interstitial keratitis, I may have an intact epithelium. This may occur from the reactivation of the virus. I have also disiform keratitis. Disiform keratitis means deep keratitis or endotheliitis. It is primary endotheliitis. So here I have uh, endothelial inflammation. And uh, finally, I may have recurrence. Uh, this disease is recurrent. And also I have uh, more and more uh, complications which will be mentioned in great detail after, um, uh, after I finish this basic knowledge. Okay, for uh, the varicella zoster, the same uh, complications, but I have here ARN and PORN, and they are forms of retinal necrosis. ARN means acute retinal necrosis, which is um, peripheral retinal necrosis. ARN, acute retinal necrosis, and I have PORN. PORN is uh, progressive outer retinal necrosis, which is a central retinal necrosis, which is more fulminant and more uh, severe and more um, uh, ha uh, having worse prognosis, okay? Uh, more disabling. I have ARN and PORN and I have retinal vasculitis. So uh, uh, together, with the, um, together with the anterior uveitis, I have also posterior uveitis in the form of ARN and PORN and retinal vasculitis. I may have also CNS involvement with um, uh, some diseases like Guillain-Barré, which is ascending motor lesions. And I have also uh, cranial nerve pulses, uh, three, four, and six, which uh, are responsible for the movement of the extraocular muscles, being the oculomotor uh, or, or, or having the oculomotor as being the commonest. So the commonest of them is what? The most common is the oculomotor nerve. The third nerve is most likely to be affected in cases of varicella zoster or thalamicus or herpes zoster or thalamicus. Okay, so let's go in uh, 